Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today Christopher asks, I was wondering if you know of any ways to gather experience in quantitative finance before committing to a job. Are there opportunities like freelance work, contests, internships, or projects that people need help with? Any advice would help. I'm asking because I'd like to get a feel for the work before I commit wholeheartedly to it, and I'd like to have some work experience under my belt going into it. Thanks again. Okay, so to answer this, Again, I'm going to answer this from a U.S. perspective because that's the market I'm in. That's the vast majority of quant jobs are all in the U.S., so that's what I'm going to talk about here. No, there's really not any specific quant thing, I would say, from an undergrad level. Sure, there are trading firms out there who will take quants. There are some here and there. Um, but the majority of jobs that are quant model development, quant validation, aren't really going to take undergrads. And I wish there was a way to say, hey... We're going to do internships as well for undergrads, but we don't. We typically take under or internships that are master's and PhD students because, again, you need enough stats and math and computer science to actually do the internship. You need to be in a mastery PhD level course. Now, that being said, things to do, things to prepare to really get a feel and understand if you would like it or not. One is do some research, talk to some industry practitioners through like um, informational interviews, for example, and make a list, right? Make a list and say, okay, I want to end up in, I don't know, high frequency trading, or I want to end up in stats arbitrage, or I want to end up in model development for credit risk, or I want to end up in model development or model validation, for example, for market risk at a bank. And talk to these people just to get an idea of what they are and aren't doing, Try to figure out, okay, so like what types of models do you build? What types of problems do you solve? And then you can jump on over to things like Kaggle and you can see there's competitions on there and you can kind of get an idea. You can kind of get a feeling for what you'd be doing in a full-time job. I think this is probably the best way to do it. Now, Kaggle, I have a whole gripe and complaint with them. The way that it's done on Kaggle is not how the real world works, obviously, because you're not just maximizing fit and whoever has the greatest fit wins the competition. Um, yes, I know there's out of time samples and oh, if you do great in that. The real world is you have business people to work with. You, the problems are far more complex. There's a lot of different constraints that you're given before you even develop the model. Kaggle is usually trimmed way back to a very, very simplified data set, which is very, very tiny and small compared to what we use in the real world. Uh, and I'm talking credit risk here because credit risk um, yeah, I've used like 100 plus gigs. I think my colleague of mine is using like a four terabyte data set once. So it's not the same. It's different on Kaggle. But Kaggle will give you a good understanding of, okay, these are the sorts of models that I would be using and building. This is kind of what the data looks like. This is kind of what I'd be doing. Now, the other piece here I mentioned before is doing the informational interviews is really, really helpful because you'll actually get to interact with professionals and Please don't get all like bummed out because I know this happens. But when you email a lot of professionals out there, a lot of them aren't going to respond because they're busy, they're slammed, they have families, jobs, hobbies, like a million things going on, like my chaotic world here. And they usually just don't have a ton of extra time to sit and chat. But if you reach out to enough people, I promise you, you will find people that say, sure, I'll jump on a call for an informational interview. So be specific and tell them, hey, I'm a student. I want to learn a little bit more about the job industry, skills that are needed, that sort of thing. And you'll get usually an interview with someone to kind of get those nitty gritty details here. Now, that being said, you can look for other jobs and other industries and other opportunities that are kind of related here. So if you have an opportunity for like an internship and an undergrad, I would look for data science. I would look for FinTech. I would look for statistics. These are going to be the big ones. I would also consider like looking at like trading firms. There are some trading firms that take undergrads. Um, I'm not going to weigh too much in on the rigorness of their quantiness, uh, <laughs> on how close it would be to actually working at some of these, like, I don't know, big quant firms that are doing quant research, for example, or model development, model validation. But I would look at these sorts of jobs because even if you get a job doing, let's say I got a job, an internship doing data science for marketing, seems nowhere near related, Right. Having the experience of being able to program, being able to learn like this is the problem we're trying to solve, being able to pull in data, understanding all the issues and the headaches you have with the data and the modeling process, coming up with some sort of model and getting someone to use it. That whole annoyance of a process and figuring out the struggles with it is going to give you the insight of whether you want to do this full time. So this isn't like I sit down and I'm like, I'm so excited. I'm going to code today. And I put my headphones on and I'm just nerding out doing math and stats. 
it's usually like, oh, I have to get on a call and I have to figure out why the person, I don't know, that wants the model built doesn't like the model we built. And then I have to understand, you know, okay, they want all these extra things built into the model based on the way they're going to use it. And then you find out management isn't happy because of X, Y, and Z. And now you have to redo this, that, and the other. And then somebody on the team didn't do their part of the job right. And now you're redoing things. There's a lot of it that's not modeling quant focused. So I would say 60% of your time is usually coding for these jobs that are quant model development, model validation, these sorts of things. Uh, If you're quant dev, you're going to be programming a lot more. But for this research side, right, doing actual model development, model validation, uh, research, these sorts of topics here, you're going to be spending about 60% of your time programming these ideas and in testing things and working with data. And because of that, I think it's good just to get some hands-on experience modeling and stats, econometrics, or data science if you can get an opportunity in doing that. And that will kind of give you the nitty-gritty details of this is what a day is like. You're going to have to write documentation, for example, on these models, and it's tedious and boring. But those are kind of my tips here. So no, there's not really a really apples to apples, easy way to get experience on this. Do informational interviews, learn a lot about the industry, learn about what people's jobs are like. Use that opportunity to figure out like what types of models the industry uses, for example, what type of risks they're modeling. And then you can take that and you can look at Kaggle and you can practice on data sets there and get some more experience and expertise on that. And then finally, if you do have an internship opportunity, take full advantage of that. Try to get one doing modeling somewhere, right? You might not be able to do it in quant finance because there's typically that master's or PhD barrier. But if you're an undergrad, um, get an internship, at least try to get one here. Doing something with stats, econometrics, that sort of thing, because you'll really understand the full process and what it's like to actually be a model developer or a researcher. So those are my tips and tricks. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And as always, until next time.